Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click that notification bell. I feel like a hiccup coming on, you know, I don't know why it is. I hiccup sometimes out of nerves. I don't know. It's really kind of strange, but it is Wednesday, September the 14th. Our devotions are coming from Joanna Weaver's book called At the Feet of Jesus. And our opening scripture comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 10. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. I love that. Let's get into this. I'm afraid that instead of mobilizing the body of Christ, the movement toward discovering our spiritual as well as our natural gifts may have provided many of us with a handy excuse. Now, when churches call for workers, we have a spiritual reason why we can't help. It just isn't my gift, we say piously, pointing to the 12th chapter of Romans and 1 Corinthians. Despite our excuses, a question still remains. What exactly do we do? I don't want to minimize the importance of understanding our strengths and our weaknesses, there is much to be learned about the ministry gifts that God gives to the church and our part in the body of Christ. Certainly a need is not necessarily a call, and no one is called to do everything. That is why we always must spend time waiting before the Lord and asking him what he would have us to do. But as far as I can tell, the biblical description of gifts were never intended as excuses to pick the kind of service that feels comfortable and convenient and then ignore all the others. Okay. After all, the same chapter of Romans that lists spiritual gifts also makes it clear that we are all called to serve regardless of our specific gifts. We may or may not have the gift of servant hospitality, Romans 12, 7, but we are all called to practice hospitality. That's in verse 13. We may or may not have the gift of giving, verse 8, but we are all called to share with God's people who are in need. That's in verse 13. Rather than picking and choosing ministry opportunities based solely on our talents and interests, Jack Huey writes in Discipleship Journal, we are directed, always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. That's what it says. Now, before I go on and read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, I have been a, a worker and a leader, a ministry leader in my church for decades, almost from the very beginning. I needed, of course, some time to grow in the Lord, to have a full understanding, but I know what it's like to be shorthanded in the church. And let's face it, not every job that needs to be done is necessarily the nicest thing, you know, and it's, it needs to be viewed at, you know, like the one who, who um, has to clean the toilets, you know, or take out the trash. That stuff is not going to do itself. It's the church is not self-cleaning. It's not a smart church in the sense that the house will automatically you know, there's no Roombas around the church. It has to be, the wood has to be polished. The floors have to be mopped or vacuumed, swept. You know, trash and garbage need to be taken out. Some of those very basic things. And then you have children's ministry, which is the area where I have worked and home fellowship groups and and different, you know, prayer team. I've, I've served in a variety of places. The church needs people to just step up and serve where they can serve. I just, I can't even put it any other way. We are all called to do something. And when you know the statistics show that 80% of the work that's done in the church is done by 20% of the people who attend that church, you're seeing a huge disparity of people who are working versus people who are not. And when I say that, you know, work needs to be done. And so someone who's doing it, who gets the job done, they're going to get called on because they know they can be depended on. It's so important 
so important to serve the Lord, even in a practical way. Just step out and do something. If they need you to serve in children's ministry, to sign children in, I'm sure you can take 10 minutes of your Sunday morning to make sure the children are securely and safely signed in. If they need you to hold babies in the nursery for one service a month, I'm sure that you can do that. You see what I'm saying? And again, it's not that you get so run over. You know, obviously you need to have a talent to sing on the worship team. You can't just let anybody serve there. They have to have musical ability in some way. But is there something else that you can do? Does your, does your church need somebody in the area of tech support? to make sure the services are getting online. Nowadays, the pandemic really showed the benefit of having modern things like that. Does your church have somebody who could be posting uh, the service links on social media to get a broader audience? You see what I mean? There may not be somebody with that capability. You see what I'm saying? Ask the Lord to show you what it is that you are to do to serve not necessarily in your gifts and talents, but where there's a need. Let him show you, Lord, what am I to do? And then commit to be faithful and loyal. You're not being faithful and loyal to that job or to the church. You're being faithful and loyal to serve the Lord. And then show him, is this all I'm supposed to do? Or is there someone else? Stir up the people in the congregations, okay? Ask him to do that. You have no idea what a blessing it is to your pastor, to the one who's called to shepherd, who can't devote everything to shepherding because he has to do all the jobs that aren't being done by people in the church who should be stepping up. Keep that in mind. Okay? A lot of people expect the pastor and the pastor's wife to do everything, and that's just not fair. That's not fair. <laughs> Think about it, guys. What can you do to ease the burden and allow your free up your pastor to do what God wants him to do? Okay, so 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Okay. So, my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Nothing you do. You're scrubbing a toilet. You're emptying a trash can. You're holding a baby. You're picking people up in the church van. You're helping the church with social media. You're helping the church with the sound system. You're helping the church serve a meal, visit the sick, go to the hospital. See what I'm saying? Whatever you're doing, if it's done in the name of the Lord, it is never useless. Now, what work of the Lord will you give yourself fully to today? Let's pray and ask the Lord to show you. He knows the need. He knows what the pastor's been crying out for help for. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for this word today. There's no condemnation to those of us who are in Christ Father, I ask right now that you stir up within everybody listening, Father. Stir up within them a desire to serve where it is needed in their local churches, Father, to ease the burden on the pastors. Help them, oh God. Help even the leaders, Lord God, who need the help, who may not, for whatever reason, want to relinquish tasks to other people. You do your will, oh God. Help us your people to rise up and serve you with enthusiasm so that the kingdom of God will grow. We thank you, Lord, and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Well, God bless you. Thank you again for spending a little time with me today. I hope these uh, devotions are encouraging to you. If they are, please consider liking and subscribing and clicking that notification bell. I do have a bunch of other fun content that I put up. I still have to do my uh, fall house tour, my fall decor tour, decor tour, say that 10 times. <laughs> God bless you and bye until next time.